Hi, so the other day I was um, trying to install MPC Beats on my Mac <clears throat> uh, laptop and it wouldn't let me because the Mac I use is a bit old. It's um, High Sierra 10.13 and uh, on the Akai website you can only download and install the latest version. So. Uh, the, the the drivers weren't compatible and I couldn't really do anything with it. So I went online looking for um, an older version of MPC Beats uh, which would be compatible and I couldn't find any. But I did find a guy on the Akai forums which said that you, if you install the latest version uh, on a Mac, uh, it'll tell you that it won't run uh, and it'll terminate the installation but if you open it up in your DAW it does work. Uh, I tried this and it did work. So this got me thinking about um, if I can do this on a Mac, I can do this on a PC. Um, I've been using the PC. Um, this is the standalone version of the Akai um, DAW. And I've been using this on the PC for a couple of years, but I've never used it as a standalone before. Um, it's a very good DAW. Uh, it it kind of mirrors the MPC hardware. I have an MPC one, which I use quite a lot. Uh, and these different sections are part, if you like, of the um, the hardware. So you, I mean, you like you have different panels on, on, on the MPC one you would have different panels here you see. Um, that aside um, I started because I was looking for a the reason why I wanted to install the MPC uh, software is because I wanted a, um, a software to use within Reaper uh, that I could use sample based um, my, basically my own samples uh, in, in a fast way and to be honest I haven't been able to use Reaper that much because of um, this problem that I, I haven't been the music I, I had to set everything up and that got in the way of creating music um, I, I switched to Ableton uh, for a while but I'm not very confident with Ableton I am with Reaper uh, but nevertheless I was using Ableton but um, yeah, I didn't really want to go into another DAW so deeply. Um, the, I, I did use Ableton for uh, Ableton 10, and you could rewire uh, Ableton into Reaper. Now, f for some reason, Ableton uh, stopped that function in, I think it's version 11. I think there is a way of working around that, which I tried. But again, you know, it takes time and whatever, and... Um, Ableton 10 did it sort of automatically. Um, MPC Beats, uh, you don't have to rewire. I mean, it's a plug-in. You just plug it in uh, like like any other instrument. Anyways, I'll close down MPC Beats and I will open up Reaper. And uh, we will... S so, yeah, you go to a Kai website and you download the Mac version as I say uh, there's only the up-to-date version you can download uh, just install it as normal uh, it'll tell you that it won't run or it's not uh, compatible uh, open up your DAW and use it as a VST plugin so I'm going to go on the PC insert a virtual instrument I'm going to write it MPC and I'm going to go for beats and add. And then it's going to ask me about, do you want to create multiple channels? Um, for now, I'm going to say no, but I will be showing you later on uh, because it, it is useful to know. So I'm going to say no for now. So it's going to be a stereo. Um, as you see, it's, it's very similar, well, identical really to um, the standalone version. It creates a two bar loop. And uh, like with most things, you can just double click and then you create your MIDI pattern. Uh, when you have your instruments up and running, uh, it, it you know, your, your VST plugins, 
it works just fine. I'm going to delete that for now. When you've installed it, uh, to get the toolbar, which um, you can either click on this little icon up here, and this sends you to the different um, sections, like I showed you with the hardware. It's basically just these icons here. It just speeds up the workflow. If if you go to view, and then toolbar, and then toolbar modes, you see all these things you can click, and then these will show up here. The other thing you should do is go to edit, go down to preferences, and plugins will come up, and uh, you basically navigate with this. You navigate to your plugins and then make sure you have these clicked at the side and then do rescan and it'll scan rescan all your plugins and just press OK and that should be you up and running. If if you press uh the space bar on your keyboard yeah you've got your and if you can see up here in Reaper the cursor is working so you've got a two bar loop working immediately programs I'm going to load a kit just drag it into the first beat yeah and this should correspond to your keyboard MIDI controller it's very straightforward you've got a two bar loop and when you press record uh, yeah and you can either just writing notes or you can play them in. And of course, your tempo sync to your door. Yeah. So I'm going to stop that, get rid of them, highlights, and just press delete to record. Now, this is important because um, you could lose all your work. If you press record, this button here, you'll see the play button light up as well. Uh, this is fine for the initial recording, um, but when you press stop and you want to overdub, if you do the same thing again, for example, let's just say we recorded these notes in and we were happy with it. If we recorded, if we did the same procedure again, record and then hit the space bar to play, these will be deleted. And you could have lost all your work. So what you do when you record your beat or instrument or whatever, uh, the second time around, go to the next button here, which is overdub. The metronome up here, you can knock on or off as you like. My advice with the MPC is not to have it on in the MPC software, but to have it on within Reaper, uh, because whatever whatever plays here will be recorded into your Reaper track. For example, if we just press play and the metronome's on, you see it's it's working. It's a bit hot at the moment. Yeah, so we have a metronome going. So we don't want that. So if you knock, knock it off in MPC Beats and have it going in Reaper. Yeah, it's not recording now. So as it's going, I'm just going to play some notes. Press stop. Uh, to record that into Reaper is very easy. That, I mean, you, let's say you've got your two-bar loop going. Go to the uh, record input, click on that, and you want to record it as an audio, let's say stereo. Um, it's already on record. Um, you can close this down. And all you have to do is press 
uh, record and it'll record. To use your own plugins, which you have already on your PC, if these icons here show you the different modes, this it comes with a a default synth. But if you click on the side of it, there you've got the default uh, plugins that come with it. You've got a bass line, you've got an electric synth, and you've got a, a tube synth. Um, but this is your VST folder. Um, you can pick whatever you want. Let's pick this and select. To see the um, plugin, you can click this icon at the side. And then you can manipulate it however you want. So this isn't a tutorial on MPC. Uh, there's some great videos, uh, tutorial videos out there, and um, they taught me uh, those those people who did those videos. They're well into their music, and they're well into the well into the software. And um, big thanks to them for doing those videos. I've learnt a lot from them. Uh, go and check out some of those videos to learn how to use the MPC software. So when you want to record with multi-channels. The process is basically the same as many other VSTIs. Uh, you have to direct the sound into Reaper uh, to the different channels. So if we open up the MPC again, and it'll ask you, uh, do we want the multi-channel option? And we say yes. It's actually, ch the first channel is like the master. It's, it's the MIDI, and it routes all those uh, signals to the corresponding channels. So number two channel is actually corresponding to number one pad. So let's open up a kit. Let's have an acoustic kit. Just drag and drop it. Okay. Um, everything comes through one and two at the moment. If you can see that. Um, there are 128 pads or channels stored in these banks. Um, I find 16 pads, 16 channels are enough for what I do. Uh, but if you wanted more, you just can drag the same kit or another kit or whatever onto these pads. Um, or, or individual samples, your own samples, yeah. So there's a lot, lot to choose from. What you've got to do is make sure that this pad channel is selected. I think by default it's on program channel. If you use program channel, um, it, it's not going to work. You, you need to go to pad channel. There you'll see program. So when you click on the first pad, it highlights program. Go down, change it to stereo output to one and two which is this channel down here. Let's turn it down a bit. Next pad, it comes out one and two because it's on program. You need to change it to three and four. Three and four. Click on the next pad. We have to change it to five and six. And the fourth pad, we need to change it to seven and eight. I won't do them all, but that's the, that's the procedure. Uh, by clicking on these four pads, you've got different channels routed. And if I turn them down a bit, because they're going to clip. Um, uh, I'm playing my keyboard. And what I've done is use this um, note repeat effect. Uh, very useful for putting down um, like basic or, or highlighted uh, sections. You can change the timing here, 1632, 64, 
or, or what a bar, the crotchet quiver sort of thing. Keep it on 16 for now. Uh, metro, metronome, I've turned off. I'm using Reaper's metronome. Um, so when you play a pad, I'm only using the bottom four. Yeah, it just repeats over and over. Uh, it's quite a nice effect and it's very easy to do. Um, I'm going to record a section. Uh, also, it'll record MIDI up here. I'm going to press overdub and then spacebar. And now you can change it from 16 to say like 32. And because I haven't used pad number two, I'm going to just play something on pad number two. And then it's the same thing, you can just record that into Reaper. Um, I've changed the settings to mono. Um, it was in stereo, you can record in MIDI, uh, but I just for now, it's, so you can close this down. Again, it, uh, if you want to, the bars are here, this at the moment it's, it's, well, I'll just switch it to one bar, but you can turn it up and down to 12 bars. It goes right the way up to infinity, I don't know how many bars, but um, you know, you can... And then you alter the, the size, you know, and you can change it here. There's many ways of getting the same result. Um, that's well, like Reaper, you know, you can, it can be as complicated or uh, simple as you want. Uh, press record and then this uh, rhythm will be recorded into the many tracks. So when you've finished your recording, your project, uh, it's probably best to save it. Uh, I mean, to save it anyways, but save it as a template. And what you can do is, I think the important one is to save the MPC as a template. If you go uh, to File and then Save Project As, you can create a folder. And then inside the folder, you can uh, name your project and then press save but if you click save as template it will re save everything inside of the new folder um, what also you can do is save um, your project uh, inside of Reaper as a template as well and uh, you go to file project template save project as template and then you basically name it. And what that does, that would bring up uh, all your tracks uh, which are rooted. And then with your MPC, uh, you can just load uh, either uh, your project or, or as a template as well. And that would keep your routing to the different channels. Um, this is, I, I found this is the most important one to save, save your routings, um, but because when you open up the MPC, Reaper's going to ask you for these, um, six, 17 channels. Um, so you're gonna be loading this up anyways, but it's probably quicker to, to load, um, it up as it as a, as a project template and also to open it up um, in the MPC as well. Well, I hope this has been useful, and um, I hope it helps with your music uh, production. <laughs>